in tonight's headlines. Home buyers react positively to the scrapping of cooling measures, with all 138 units of a new development sold in hours. Former financial chief John Tsang sounds warning over the government issuing more bonds to cover expenditure. And a ceasefire could be on the horizon in the Gaza Strip as Hamas officials arrive in Egypt for talks. It was the moment developers have been waiting for. There was a frenzy at the sales office of a residential development this morning. As buyers rushed to snap up units, just days after all property cooling measures were scrapped. The first batch of 138 units at Belgravia Place were gone in four hours. The most expensive flat was a 457 square foot, three bedroom unit, which cost $7.86 million. Developer Henderson Land confirmed plans to roll out another batch of flats this week. Apart from the scrapping of special stamp duties, Agents also attributed strong sales to the influx of professionals through the top talent scheme. Henderson Land Sales Director Thomas Lam says more expats have been entering the market, noting they would usually purchase a flat within three years of arriving in the city. After recording a massive deficit amid dwindling revenue from stamp duties and land sales, the financial secretary announced plans to issue $120 billion worth of bonds in 2024-25. Paul Chan insisted the government has no problem paying off the debt in the future and its finances remain sound. But not everyone was convinced. His predecessor, John Zhang, said he was concerned that Hong Kong may have to live on perpetual loans. In an article on Facebook, the former financial chief admitted it is common for many countries to issue bonds to support government operations. But he said Hong Kong is merely a special administrative region which cannot print large amounts of banknotes. Therefore, it was not appropriate to compare the city against other countries. Zhang added that under a high interest rate environment, it will be difficult to lure investors if the bonds do not offer returns of at least 4 to 5 percent, hence increasing the cost of the exercise. Overborrowing also could lead to agencies downgrading Hong Kong's credit rating, he warned. Hong Kong has undoubtedly entered into structural deficit, Zhang declared, as income from taxes and the land sales is unlikely to bounce back in the near future. Proposals to charge top earners and luxury property owners higher taxes and rates will only generate an extra $2 billion each year, which Zhang described as a drop in the ocean. Apart from looking for new revenue sources, it is equally important for the government to save money, he concluded. Chan, meanwhile, wrote in his weekly blog that he set out the budget with Hong Kong's interests wholly in mind. The three goals, he said, are to instill short-term confidence into the markets, strengthen long-term economic development tactics, and ensure stability and sustainability of public finances. Janice Yu, Cable News. are hunting for a driver in a hit-and-run accident outside the Yamate Fruit Market last night. Surveillance camera captured the moment the black seven-seater plowing into multiple pedestrians as it headed west on Waterloo Road after 11 p.m. The driver then reversed out of the spot and fled the scene. Two men and two women, aged 28 to 31, were sent to hospital to treat minor injuries. A pallet of fruits were also damaged. The area is prone to traffic accidents, as the roads are often used by fruit wholesalers as temporary loading base after dark. On the other end of Waterloo Road in Kowloon Tong last night, 
a heavy truck tipped over as it navigated a sharp bend. Dashcam footage from a trailing taxi showed the truck driver losing control just as he was passing Moonbeam Terrace at around 10 p.m. The vehicle skidded diagonally before flipping to its left side and eventually grinding to a stop in the middle of the road. No other vehicles were nearby at that time, while an ambulance behind immediately came to the rescue. The male driver was conscious and did not require hospital treatment. Kowloon-bound traffic at the Lion Rock Tunnel was severely disrupted as the wreckage was being removed. Janice Yu, Cable News. Five cats were rescued from a flat in Kwai Chong this afternoon after a fire broke out. It was about 1 p.m. when passers-by saw smoke billowing from a unit on the eighth floor of Tak Cheng building. About 30 residents were evacuated. Upon arrival, firefighters retrieved five cats from the flat, and some of them required first aid and even oxygen masks. Sources suggest there are seven felines in the household, with the other two unaccounted for after they possibly escaped through the window. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals has taken the cats for a checkup. Lawmakers in Pakistan have elected Sheba Sharif as their Prime Minister following a vote in the capital Islamabad. Sharif secured 201 votes in the National Assembly compared to 92 for Omar Ayub Khan, who was backed by jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan. The vote came nearly one month after Pakistan is headed to the polls to elect members of the National Assembly. With no clear winner from the general elections, days of negotiations followed. Sharif eventually declared a majority in parliament after forming an alliance with uh, Bilawal Bhutto Zardari uh, of the Pakistan People's uh, Party. Party. This will be the 72-year-old's second term as prime minister, and he'll take office at a time when Pakistan is facing economic freefall and worsening domestic security. Days after more than 110 Palestinians died while trying to reach an aid convoy near Gaza City, the United States was forced to respond. With a diplomatic solution unlikely in the short term, the U.S. military resorted to airdropping 66 bundles of aid into the besieged enclave. Coordinating with the Jordanian Air Force, the shipment included 38,000 meals which landed along the coastline of Gaza. But aid organizations insist that is far from enough as famine unfolds on the ground. The situation in Gaza tonight can only be described as catastrophic. Uh, the humanitarian needs are absolutely through the roof. Uh, families are struggling to meet their daily needs. It's increasingly difficult to find clean food, uh, clean water and access to basic health care. And it's really the responsibilities of the parties to the conflict to enable humanitarian organizations to be able to meet the needs of civilians uh, and civilians themselves should never be a target. Meanwhile, Israeli military spokesman Daniel Hagari rejected accusations that troops intentionally fired at Palestinians rushing towards the aid convoy last week. He said an internal review revealed that many of the casualties were caused by a stampede. The war of words came as another dozen or so Palestinians were killed in Rafah overnight by Israeli air raids. The death toll in the Gaza Strip has surpassed 30,000 since the conflict started nearly five months ago. Multiple sources are now suggesting that a six-week ceasefire could be near as Hamas officials arrived in Cairo to resume negotiations with Israel. Sachin Katvi, Cable News.